Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Luminosity Range Live Mask. So in case you didn't know, one of the main updates of Affinity Photo 2 is this new Live Masks feature. So what I'm going to do today is explain the benefits of this and how to actually use this. Let's take the case of this raw file right here. As you can see from this raw file, the foreground is pretty underexposed. So this was taken um, close to sunset. So the sky area is still pretty bright. So what you would want to do to this image is brighten up the foreground without hitting the sky area. So one of the ways you would brighten is to actually use the exposure slider. Right? And so that nicely brings up the foreground. But the exposure slider will blow out the highlights. So you wouldn't use the exposure slider for this adjustment. Another thing you could do is make the adjustment via shadows and highlights. So if I adjust the shadow here, you can see it nicely brings up the shadow area, but it also loses a lot of contrast. And so this image doesn't look all that great, but it did the job of not blowing up the sky area, but there should be a better option. So the option is really to use masks. And so to do that, I would have to go into the photo persona. But uh, before I do that, let's make some minor adjustments to this image, All right? So I'm just going to go into shadows and highlights. Let's reduce the highlights just a little bit, not too much. And then the shadows just a tad like so, okay? Let me go into the photo persona now to make further enhancements. I'm gonna click develop here. And now I'm in the photo persona. All right, so how would I brighten this thing out? The traditional way would be to make a selection in this foreground area. So let me just show you how I would normally do that. I would make sure that snap to edges is selected and then I would make these adjustments accordingly. So that's how you would normally do it. Now, the problem with this is as you go towards the end here, these edges become a little bit more complicated. It could take a lot more work to get the proper selection done. And so you could actually, of course, uh, refine the mask and so forth and so on. But for some images, it might be too much work, right? So things like jagged edges here or edges which are very unclear, this type of selections might not be very accurate and you could get halos uh, in your image. So an alternative now is to use a luminosity mask. So the reason we could use a luminosity mask here is because this foreground area is pretty dark. So it's clearly a big area of darkness here, which we could create the mask from. And so to do that, let's um, first create our adjustment. So we click on the adjustment button here. Let's use brightness and contrast. And let's adjust the brightness here. And so as you can see, it, it nicely brings up the detail. But again, it blows up the sky area here. Let's create the mask now with the luminosity live mask. To create the luminosity live mask, let me delete this exposure adjustment, okay? What we can do here is just click on the mask layer button, choose luminosity range mask, and then we are shown this widget. So this widget right now is pure white. And you can tell this because you can click on preview. And that's because the curves is right at the top here. So what this means is for the entire range of image, you are giving a white mask. If I want it to be black, you could also just drop this curve down to the bottom. And what this means is the entire image, the entire mask now is going to be black. Now, if you, want to, if you want to create the mask based on the characteristics of an image, then what we could do is put this, make this mask in this form. So what we're getting here is the mask is created based on the brightness levels of the image. In a mask, anything that is white is where the adjustment will be shown. Anything that's black is where the adjustment will not be shown. As you can see here, what will be affected is this sky area because it is bright, All right? So let's just demonstrate that. So if I go back here and I, and I adjust, 
the brightness. You can see most of the effect is actually occurring on the sky. From the mask, you can see if I click on preview, the bright area is actually the sky, which is not what we want. What we want is the shadow area here in this foreground to be in white, while the sky area should be in black. So we can do this by adjusting this curve. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reverse it. So we're going to put this, this left node here at the top and the bottom node here at the bottom. So it's now reversed. And so you can see now this is more correct. Let's make the adjustment now. The shadow area is now more affected than the, the sky area. But the effect is not really great because we don't have a perfectly white mask. The mask is not smooth as well. Right, so let's just go back to our mask. And you can see that it is not a perfectly white mask. So what will happen there is the brightness will not be distributed evenly and you're going to get a really low contrast image. So what you can do here is to adjust the curve to get the effect that we want. So first, let's just drag down the curve here and see what happens. And you can see now that the sky area becomes more black, which is what we want. But this foreground, which you want to be in all white, now has been affected. So you have to play around with this mask in order for it to in order for it to be as close to the desired output that we want. Okay, so you can just move the points around here. Okay, so let's just drag this up like that. And now you can see if I drag this up, see now the white area comes more white. That looks pretty good. Let me just close this and let's just look at the adjustment now. And so that has a much better effect now. As you can see here that the foreground is significantly affected while the sky is hardly affected at all, which is the effect that we wanted. So that is the luminance mask. Now we could make further adjustments to this. Let's go ahead and make some edits to this mask now. So in this luminance mask, you have a bunch of options here. Let me click preview again. So the ideal situation is you want to make the mask, as I say, pure white, or at least more even. So this is a bigger improvement than the original mask that we got. But uh, there's some options here, like uh, this blur here will allow us to make the mask a little bit smoother. Right? Like so. That's one slider that you could also use. Right? So let's just try that out. So if I go back here, you can see now that it has a much better effect. The main problem is if you zoom in, there's now more halos here, which is not what we want. And so that's one side effect of using the blur tool, it can create more halos in the image. So maybe we don't want to use that. Okay, so maybe let's reduce the blur here. Let me show the preview here. So let's use that a little bit sparingly because uh, we don't want to see any halos in the image. Now, what are other things that we could do to this mask? So there's some other operations here that will be useful. First, option click allows you to see the mask here. You can click option click or just click the preview here to actually see what the mask looks like. So what if we want to make further edits to this mask? You could actually do that as well. So if I right click on the thumbnail and you can also click this arrow right here to bring the mask down below. And you can right click here and you can click edit mask here. So what you can do with edit mask is you could paint on the mask, right? If I have my brush tool selected and I select a black color, you could paint on this as well to edit it further. All right. So you can see that a new mask will be created in this luminance mask here. So there'll be a mask for the luminance mask, which might be confusing. And uh, let's just see the effect again. And now that's looking better, right? So now you, we see that the sky is no longer affected at all. Finally, you could also use a compound mask to enhance the mask even further. So let me explain what the compound mask is. So a compound mask allows you to combine two masks together with some operation. How does that work? So all I have to do is make sure I uh, just to click on mask layer click on compound mask and this new icon will be created and this icon is 
designed to hold more than one mask. So why is it more than one mask? Because with a compound mask, what you're trying to do is combine the two masks together to create an improved mask. So what I'm gonna do here is to drag two masks. So let's start off with this luminance mask. I'm gonna drag it right here. And now you can see that the luminance mask is inside the compound mask, right? So if I option click on the compound mask, okay, you can see it's the same mask because I only have one mask inside this compound mask, right? So what I'm gonna do is try to improve this. You can see there's a lot of imperfections in this white area of the mask, which I want to clear up. So I'm going to create another mask and combine it with this current luminance mask to fix these areas here. So what I'm gonna do is just click on create a new mask. So I'm gonna click on the mask layer and then just choose mask here, or I'll just choose empty mask, all right? So empty mask will create a mask which is black. So let me just drag that into the compound mask Okay, I'm gonna put it at the top here. So now we have two masks inside the compound mask. But you will see that if I option click on the compound mask to look at the mask, you see that there is no effect. So you're saying, why is that so? Now, well, it's because the, op the current operation is add, right? Add. So what you're doing here is you're adding this white area from the luminance mask with this black area. But the black area is basically zero, it's nothing. Right? So there's nothing to add. So it's basically adding the white area of this mask with zeros. So what you get as a result is no change. Right? However, if we paint white in these areas here, then this can further enhance this mask. So let me explain. So what I'm going to do is just click on the black mask, choose this paint brush here, and I'm going to be painting white in this black mask, right? So watch, so if I, cl uh, I paint white here, and now, and now I got a better mask, see? So this is the compound mask now, right? So again, there are two masks here, which are combined. So the first mask is this mask, right? This is the luminous mask, and then which I combined with this mask right here, right? To get a better mask, which looks like this. So it's more of what kind of mask I really wanted. So if I look at the edit, now that looks so much better. See that? That's a much better result. Now let's just f finish this up with a clarity adjustment. And the clarity adjustment I'm just going to apply to the whole image. So I can go back to the develop persona here. And if you do that, you have to make sure you click on the raw image click on develop persona and then I'm just going to go and make the clarity adjustment here. There you go. And that looks so much better. You can see that there is very minimal, if any, halos or imperfections in the edit. It looks very, very natural. So this is the before and this is the after. Before and after. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. So you can see that luminance range masks are really, really powerful. And I hope this video made it clearer for a lot of you who are wondering what this tool was really for. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.